So what changed is that, oh, okay, let me write down this equation again. And so that would probably help you understand this better, is that equation in period T is given by this plus Z. So before the 1970s, uh, there was, see, there was over here, we have an expected inflation. But before the 1970s and 1940s, 50s, and the 60s, the assumption was that expectation is not important. There is a relationship between uh, unemployment and inflation, and this too determines where the economy is going to be operating. And there is a fixed amount of inflation. Uh, let's call it the autonomous inflation. And uh, so even if we didn't have any of this, there is an autonomous part to inflation, which is fixed. And then once we introduce unemployment, that rate would be changing. So it was something like we were, we are telling that we have this level, okay? And suppose this is a fixed level of inflation. And that would mean we're telling that inflation is not going to go above this level. However, as unemployment begins to increase, inflation may fall. Uh, but there was a problem here. And with, with this, and that became very obvious during the 1970s. Uh, what became obvious was that inflation became persistent. So this is important. During the 1970s, mostly in the US, inflation became persistent. What I mean by that is that before that in the preceding uh, decades, one year's inflation didn't really have any effect on the inflation of the next year. So one year it was high, the next it was low, it sort of went up and down. But during the 70s, the world economy and mostly US started to experience persistently high inflation. So what I mean by that is that if in YT you experienced high inflation, uh, chances are that in the next year, you would also have high inflation. So there was a persistent that you could make predictions. Over here in the initial Phillips curve, there is no scope for expectation because one year's inflation does not affect the next year's inflation. So there was no scope for people to make any expectations, make any predictions. All they knew was that depending what, on what happened to unemployment, inflation will go up or down. But once you started to have a persistent inflation, inflation of 2017 will help us predict the inflation of 2018. Inflation of 2018 will help us predict the inflation of 2019 and so on. What happened is we started to make uh, expectations started to play a much larger role. And so what we saw during that period was that the expected inflation of uh, in year T depended on two things, okay? So one was the fixed level of inflation that we are expecting will occur. But the other was the inflation of the previous year. And people started to consider both of this when trying to figure out what will happen to inflation. Uh, so let's, let me add this to is one minus theta and a theta. So the value of theta is within zero and one. 
So what does this mean? If theta is equal to zero, okay. if theta is equal to zero, what we see is that expectation of inflation is just a fixed rate. So this is the uh, the original Phillips curve, where expectation is a fixed amount. So this is what we have here. If theta is equal to one, then what do we get? Theta is equal to one, then we get that expectation of period t's inflation is exactly equal to inflation of the previous period. So this shows very strong persistent. Whatever the inflation was in the previous year will be the inflation this year. But even in this case, in this case, predictions are possible but once again, inflation is not fluctuating. So let me write that down, then I'll explain. Predictions are possible, but no change in inflation. Why do I say that? Uh, so if inflation this year is five, that would mean that the expected inflation next year would also be five. And the year after that, five. And the year after that, five. And so on and so forth. And that's not very interesting either. But suppose, let's take a value between zero and one. So suppose theta is 0 0.4. Could have taken any value between zero and one. This is what I'm thinking. In that case, expected inflation is how much? 0 0.6 times the fixed amount plus 0 0.4 times inflation of the previous year. And in this case, we are using both the fixed amount of inflation and inflation of the previous year to form our expectation of next year's inflation. And this is a much more realistic scenario. And as we, uh, as we move forward with the Phillips curve, this is the expectation we are going to be forming, is that our theta is not going to be exactly zero or exactly one, but it's going to lie somewhere in between which means that when we try to uh, predict next year's inflation, we are going to consider both uh, the historic inflation and the fixed rate 